the name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Ghost, amen. Hail Mary, for the grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Sarah, plenty mac, that heart of Mary. So dear faithful, all of us here, including servers and sisters, it's good to reflect upon this past year. We're now this 26th Sunday after Pentecost, and already the last Sunday of the liturgical year is next Sunday. And Holy Mother Church, through the words of St. Paul, reminds us of the following. Brethren, we give thanks to God always for you all, making a remembrance of you in our prayers without ceasing, being mindful of the work of your faith, labor, and charity. So when St. Paul says that, then I suppose we could stop, I do, and say, what was my faith this year? Did I labor for my faith? Did I labor for the Catholic religion? Did I try to better myself? And what was my charity towards God, towards my neighbor? And then did I have this enduring hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before God and our Father? So it's a good time to reflect upon that and to think about what we have done. And I know in doing this faith, labor, charity, and trying to endure, there are a lot of obstacles. There are a lot of things that are all around us that make it difficult. And so I want to draw your attention to a recent edition of the Fatima Crusader. Some of you may get that already. In the recent edition of fall of this year, issue 133 of the Fatima Crusader, has so many very interesting and important articles. Why? Because they address Satanism, communism, problems in the church and corruption. And they're very simple and easy to read. But they encompass what we're always battling against. And we should never grow faint of heart. We should never grow weak. We should never think that just because we come to Mass on a Sunday that our religion is safe, that it is easy. No, it's not. It's not easy. It's not safe. We have to always be constantly working, laboring to protect our faith. To be fighting for Christ the King, whose feast we celebrated at the end of October. We have to always be on this constant warfare. And it keeps us on our toes. It keeps us in shape, quote unquote. Because if we grow tired, if we grow tepid, if we grow complacent, the enemy takes over, just the way it is. He's done it in the United States. He's done it over other countries. The enemy, the devil, sees our complacency, tepidity, our weakness and slowness, and he takes over. And we don't want that. We can't afford to do that. We have to always be fighters in this warfare for our faith. We put in the bulletin today an excerpt from Bishop T.C. de Mallory's sermon that he gave on his love of the society of St. Pius X. And I, in conjunction with the Fatima Crusader, I want to draw your attention to that letter posted there on the society's website. It's very obvious. You just open the sspx.org, and it's right there in part of the news his letter, Why I Love the Society of St. Pius X. So I just put a little taste of it there in the bulletin, but there's many other points, a couple of which I'll mention to you today. And so you see, the Fatima Crusader opens up all of these problems that we need to be aware of and face, but Bishop Tissier's letter shows you what is one of the answers to it. And what he loved about the Society of St. Pius X. Because it, you see, the Society of St. Pius X started as an order, a congregation to promote the priesthood and support the Mass and protect the Mass. It wasn't first organized to be a fighter. We were not first organized to fight against anything. We were simply going to preserve. We were just simply trying to preserve the priesthood, as it always was, and the Mass, because that is the foundation of our faith. Jesus Christ, High Priest. 
and victim. And so we have to protect that, we have to support that. But over time, we saw it became more and more obvious that this was a battle between tradition and modernism. And so therefore, a fight between Jesus Christ and the devil. And so our Bishop Tissier, in his love of society, he points that out. And one of his loves is that, and I'll read it to you, that he saw the Society of St. Pius X stand up, was not afraid to stand up and become a warrior, he says. And that's the word he uses. He says that the Society of St. Pius X became a warrior. I love the society, finally dear faithful, because it was launched into the combat for the faith. It was not feared, it has not feared to launch itself boldly into the risk of unjust condemnation, into the combat for the faith to which the Apostle St. Paul exhorts us. We just read about that. We are still in the battle for the faith, thank God. So in spite of it, because it was not founded to fight, it was founded to pass on the priesthood. In spite of it, but willingly, the society became a warrior. He says, I love the society because it is a warrior. That shows you the, the backbone of Bishop TCA. Because it wages war for Christ the King, and that's no trifle. I love the society, so to speak, in short, because it's the last bastion. The last bastion, says Bishop TCA, that remains to resist dead on to say no to the conciliar and post-conciliar apostasy. The last precious bastion, our last duty, therefore, is to protect it from modernist infections. Our first duty is to guard this bastion for the future, for the church. So, you know, really when I read this epistle today and I, I think of all you and I think about what you did to protect your faith or what you did to strive to, to preserve it, both in faith and charity, and then I, I have to do a self-reflection. What did I do for the Society of St. Pius X? What did all of us priests do in this last year? All of us members of the society, what did we do to guard it? To guard the church and to guard the society. We can always do more. And that's why I draw your attention to being a crusader through the Fatima Crusader and knowing the things that are around us that are errors or problems, but also to listen to what Bishop TCA says, and maybe we can have the same spirit. And do we have the same spirit already? Those who come to the Latin Mass of the Society of St. Pius X, those who say that their support of the Society of St. Pius X, those who say they want nothing but tradition and way with that modernism, do they have the same spirit? Do they have this love? Bishop T.C. is not a sappy man. And I can just imagine as he was saying his sermon in, in French, how often he mentioned, I love, I love, I love. He's not a sappy person. For him to say it's manly, to say it's manly. How many of us have said we love anything? I hope you said it to your wife and to your children. But how many, of, how many of us men have said we love the church? How many of us have said we love the Society of St. Pius X? Or love the Mass? That we love our faith? It's all right to do that. It's all right to show that emotion. It's all right to show that endearing love. If only. And so I want to address a couple things that Archbishop Lefebvre said, and you can see from Archbishop Lefebvre's words that Bishop Tissier is following on that. And it comes down to our respect, our love of the church, yes, our respect for the church, but our love of Rome and our attachment to the Roman pontiff. You know, today there's a lot of criticism in the church. It's easy to say, look at that, look at that. Or, and then pretty soon in our heart we grow bitter, in our heart we grow distant from our roots, which is the church and the pope. It's very easy to just throw everything out, like a Protestant. We're not Protestants. So I want, to, I want you to hear what Archbishop Lefebvre says, and this is the spirit we want to always keep, no matter what the right says, no matter what the left says, we have to keep this spirit. 
What does he say? Another characteristic of our society is the love of the Catholic Church and the love of Rome. He says, our seminarians, seminaries exist out of love for the Roman Catholic Church. So therefore, we must pray and make sacrifices. And like Mary, we must remain at the foot of the cross. We must not abandon our Lord Jesus Christ, even though he appears on the cross. The apostles wanted to do that, didn't they? There's a couple of times when they ran away from our Lord Jesus Christ, when he said, I am food indeed and drink indeed. Oh, I'm not going to do that. That would be cannibalism. And there's another time they wanted to run away too. Are you with him? Or at the foot of the cross, they ran away. They didn't want to go to the cross and, and stay attached to Jesus Christ. Even though he appears on the cross, as Holy Scripture says, like a leper. At that moment, the Blessed Virgin Mary maintained her faith and continued to see God behind those wounds, behind the pierced heart of Jesus. We too, in spite of the wounds in the church, in spite of the difficulties and the persecution that we're enduring, enduring in hope, as we just read in the epistle, even though we are enduring, including those from the authorities in the church, ouch, sometimes that hurts the most to be condemned by your parent. We must not abandon the church, and we will not abandon the church. We will continue to remain faithful to the church through the true priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the holy sacrifice of the Mass of our Lord Jesus Christ, and through the true sacraments, and through the true catechism. One of our, my first preoccupations Archbishop Lefebvre says, was to have a house in Rome. He really wanted that. So eventually he opened the house in Albano, which became a reality when we purchased the property there, a religious house that was officially recognized by the local bishop and even by Bishop Mami. Eternal Rome is always present in Rome through the tombs of the popes, which links us to the apostles, and in particular to St. Peter, who is truly the foundation stone of the church. Eternal Rome is also present through all the other martyrs who shed their blood to prove their faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. One cannot be a priest of the Catholic Church without being attached to those who gave their blood to help found it. All these magnificent examples are encouraging for us and attach us to this Rome that is truly the heart of the Church. And that is why we like to pray at the tombs of St. Peter and Paul and the other apostles and martyrs who are buried there. And therefore, one of the characteristics of the society is the love of the Catholic Church, the love of Rome, and the attachment to the Supreme Pontiff as the successor of Peter. Unfortunately, the Holy Father is not fulfilling his function as he should. With all due respect to the one who sits on the chair of Peter, we are obliged to note that he no longer proclaims the truth as he should. The bishops are no longer confirmed in the Catholic faith. Otherwise, they would not make catechisms like the one they did, a modernist catechism in 1981, or the other similar catechisms that are no longer Catholic. Nevertheless, this does not prevent us from being attached to the successor of Peter, who links us to the apostles. He even said that to the new bishops, the new bishops elect, the four of them at the time. He said to them, I beseech you to remain attached to the see of Peter, to the Roman Catholic Church, mother and mistress of all churches, to remain attached to the integral Catholic faith expressed in the various creeds of our Catholic faith, Catechism of the Council of Trent, and in conformity with what you were taught during your seminary. Remain faithful in the handing down of this faith so that the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ may come. And we are convinced, this must be our spirit, we are convinced that in maintaining these traditions, we are declaring our love, our docility, and our obedience to the successor of Peter. What backs it up very, very, very well is the words of Our Lady of Fatima, when she said to the children of Fatima, and we're not excused from this, pray for the Pope. Pray for the Pope, he suffers much. One can look at the, the current Supreme Pontiff and wonder if he suffers much, because he just runs away with his addition, his, um, his uh, yeah, modernizations, but truly, he must be suffering. He must be going against the Holy Ghost so often. And he probably wonders himself, why don't I see the fruits of my labor? 
Why am I not just converting hundreds and thousands of souls around the world? Why isn't it, why is this society of St. Pius X always a spur in my side? Why is this, this Latin mass always such a burden to me? Because he's not acting with the Holy Ghost and yet he can't see it. We need to pray for him. We need to pray for his soon to be another successor. We have the opportunity by our novenas, prayers, and sacrifices to pray for a good pope. Just like we have to pray for good presidents. And I will then end this sermon by saying I'm going to draft a prayer either by putting something together that I find, but the intention will be to pray for the removal of this governor of the state of California. His conversion or his removal? And I don't mince words with that. He makes people suffer in this state. And he needs to go or he needs to convert. And we will pray for that. It's so important in this state. Many people are being hurt. Many people are leaving this state. Many families can't even live as families. He, it's just incredible the type of persecution that they, he puts upon good souls, conservative people. All for what? For running the state into the ground. And so we need to pray for the good of the faith. What's the purpose of having a good state? So that it can be a Catholic state. So that it can be a place where we can practice our faith, that we can feel like we can raise our families. And I think all of you want that. Otherwise, you have to move away. That's, that's incredible. And incredible that a, a president or a governor never says to himself, I want these people to be happy in order to stay in their country or stay in their state. And that's the situation we live in. With the love that we have for the church, the love that we have for the pope, the love that we have for the clergy, we can make a big difference. So let us be fighters. Let us endure and hope in labor and faith and charity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.